So before we proceed with the lecture, there's a correction in the previous one regarding the discussion on semi-rings. Well, I said in the remark that a ring is a semi-ring, but what was written before is a sigma ring. So this should be corrected. It should be a semi-ring. Okay, so with that, we now discuss what are Dinkin systems. So the idea behind this Dinkin systems are uh, as follows. So in order to prove that a collection is a sigma algebra, it might be easier to uh, relax the condition of uh, the closure under countable unions if we replace the sets involved to be pairwise disjoint. Okay, so a collection D subsets of X will be called a Dinkin system if we have uh, these three properties. X is in D and it's closed under a complementation. So these are the two conditions for uh, a sigma algebra. And uh, finally, D3, if we have a countable collection of uh, pairwise disjoint elements in D, then the union is also in D. In some text, uh, in order to emphasize that this is a pairwise disjoint union, a dot inside the union symbol is sometimes uh, represented. So let us discuss a few remarks here. The empty set is contained in D. Well, this follows from D1 and D2. Since uh, the complement of X, which is the empty set, is in D. D is also closed under a finite union, so pairwise disjoint. Uh, elements. Well, according to the first remark, if you take, uh, let's say, d sub n plus 1 and d sub n plus 2 and so on to be the empty set, then this union here would be the finite union of the d sub case k from 1 to n. So this means that uh, D is also close under finite union, so pairwise disjoint elements. And you might uh, quickly uh, note that sigma algebras are Dinkin systems. So therefore, there are more Dinkin systems than uh, sigma uh, algebras. So in this way, the Dinkin system generated by a collection C, subsets of X, which will be denoted by delta of C, is smaller than the sigma algebra generated by C. Again, as usual, the Dinkin system generated by C is the intersection of all uh, Dinkin systems D that contain C. Okay, to see that not all Dinkin systems are uh, sigma algebras, or in fact, there are Dinkin systems that are not even algebras. Let us consider a set having four elements. In this case, in this case let's say uh, the set containing one, two, three, four. And consider the collection D, the set of all subsets of this set X with an even number of elements. What is D1? So D1 tells us that uh, X must be in the collection. Of course, X has four elements, so therefore X is in D.
How about uh, the complement? You can uh, easily see that if you have uh, a set having no elements, that's the empty set, or two elements or four elements, then you could recognize the number of elements in the complement would be four, two, and zero respectively. Hence, the complement has also an even number of uh, components. And uh, finally, if you have a pairwise disjoint uh, union uh, of sets, you could see immediately that you also have uh, an even number for the union. So for instance, if you take this two and then this two, we are pairwise disjoint and the union is X and the uh, number of elements is even. D is not a Dinkin system. Uh, so D is a Dinkin system, but not an algebra. To see that, it is enough to show that uh, it is not close under intersection. If you take A, for instance, now to be the set containing one, two, and B to be the set containing two, four, these are sets having even elements. But if you look at the intersection, the intersection is the singleton containing two, and this is not an element of D because it has only one, therefore an odd number of elements. Okay, so this implies that D is also not a sigma algebra. Okay, so the second condition, which is closure under complementation, can be replaced by the following condition D2 prime, which is the closure under relative complementation. Be precise, consider elements uh, D and E in the Dinkin system, and E contains D. Then uh, the set difference, E minus D, or the complement of D relative to E, must be also in the Dinkin system. And the other way around. If D1, D2 prime, and D3 hold, then the collection D uh, is also a Dinkin system. Well, uh, the proof is quite straightforward. So for this implication, we only need uh, to prove that a Dinkin system satisfies D2 prime. So if we look at the uh, set difference E minus D, you can write this as the complement of the quantity E complement union D. So I advise you to draw a Venn diagram to at least visualize this equation. Okay, now this E complement is in D by D2 since uh, D is a Dinkin system, uh, it is closed under complementation. Hence, the union is also in D by S, uh, by the above remark. As long as the uh, sets involved are pairwise disjoint. That is, E complement intersection D is the empty set. And this is valid since uh, D is contained in E. So therefore, outside C, intersection with D uh, has no common uh, element. Okay. 
So if E complement union D is in C, therefore the complement is again uh, in D by D sub 2, hence E minus D is also in D. And that is D2 prime. For the other implication, suppose that uh, D1, D2 prime, and D3 are satisfied. So in order to establish that D is a Dinkin system, it is enough to verify D sub 2, which is closure under complementation. Well, that is easy since D1 and D2 prime, well, with, in D2 prime, we take E to the X, we immediately get, get D sub 2. Since the uh, complement relative to X is the complement of the set itself. Okay, so that's uh, the proof of uh, the theorem, stating that again, D2 prime or D2 uh, in the definition of a Dinkin system can be replaced by D2 prime, which means that the system must be closed under relative complementation. Now, one would like to ask, when is a Dinkin system a sigma algebra? The student tells us that a Dinkin system that is closed under intersections or finite intersections to be precise, is indeed a sigma algebra. So the first step that we would like uh, to show is that it is closed under finite unions. Okay. Take note that in order to prove that D is a sigma algebra, it is sufficient to prove that it is closed under countable unions. And the sets involved are not necessarily pairwise disjoint. Okay. So as I said, as a first step, we shall prove that it is close under finite unions. So let us consider first two elements, D and E in the Dinkin system. We want to show that the union is also in the Dinkin system. So if you have, let's say a set D, and a set E, then this is, can uh, the union can be written as uh, D minus the intersection D, intersection E, this quantity here, which is basically D minus E, and the union with E. Okay, so, here we have written the union as a pairwise disjoint uh, union of E and D minus E. And we can write D minus E as D minus the quantity D intersection E. Okay. Take note that this is an element of D, since uh, D is closed under finite uh, intersections. So therefore, the intersection of two elements in the Dinkin system is also in the Dinkin system. Hence, this one is an element of D by D2 prime, since D intersection E is a subset of D. That's why we have replaced 
E in the set difference a while ago by the intersection D uh, intersection. Okay. Since a Dinkian system uh, is close under finite unions of pairwise disjoint sets, and these two sets here, this one and this one are pairwise disjoint, since one is in E and the other one is not in E. Uh, this implies that uh, the union of D and E is also in D. Okay, now that we have verified uh, that D is close under the union of two elements, one can proceed easily by induction, but this is also valid for any finite number of sets in the Tinken system. Step two, or the second step, tells us that we can do this, in fact, with a countable number of elements in the Dinkin system. So given a sequence of elements in D, we would like to show that the union is also in D. And we do this by the process uh, disjointification. So we would construct a sequence of sets that are in the Dinkin system, which are also increasing. So in other words, let us initialize E0 into the empty set, E1 to be A1, E2 to be A1 union A2, and in general, EN would be uh, the union of the sets A sub J, J from one to N. Okay. According to step one, these are all elements of D. Since E sub N is the finite union of uh, the elements, then we have this. And there should be a correction here. Instead of the A sub J's, we should have the D sub J's. Okay. So since E sub N is obtained by adding the first N sets in the collection, the sequence must be increasing. Meaning E naught is a subset of E1, E1 must be a subset of E2, and in general E sub N minus one is a subset of E sub N. So the sets are getting larger and larger since we are adding more sets in E sub N for a larger value of N. So to have an intuition of what is happening, so E1 here is A sub one, E sub two is A1 union A2, A3, or I should say, D1, D2, union D1, D3, union D2, union D1. So there are more sets involved, hence the set is increasing. So E1 is containing E2, and E2 is containing A3, E3, and so on. Now, one could show that the union of the D sub Ns is the union of E sub N minus E sub N minus one. Okay, so what would be 
e1 minus e0. That should be e1 because e0 is empty. And uh, e2 minus e1 would be a2 union a1, or I should say d2 union d1 minus d1, and so on. Since these are increasing, so this shape, this annular region here, that would be e2 minus e1. So you just think of this red shaded region here. And the green shaded region would be E3 minus E2. Okay, so the idea here is that we have written the union of the D sub Ns as the union of the E sub N minus E sub N minus one. since E sub n minus one is a subset of uh, E sub n, then this relative difference or relative complement must be in D by D two prime that we have discussed a while ago. Hence the union this part here is in D by D3 since uh, the uh, collection, say EN minus EN minus one is pairwise disjoint. Well, you can see it uh, here based on the uh, diagram, but one can easily uh, show this using basic principles in a set theory. And that is what we wanted to show. The, the union of the D sub n's are uh, in or the union of the D sub n's is in D. Again, the idea is what we call disjointification. Since the D sub n's here are uh, not uh, necessarily pairwise disjoint, we would like to write the union as the union of pairwise disjoint elements. And in order to apply, so that uh, we could apply the property of a Dinkian system. In particular, uh, the closure with respect to countable unions of pairwise disjoint sets in the system. Again, a Dinkian system that is closed under intersections is a sigma algebra. And that closure with respect to the intersection was used in the first step of the proof, namely on this part. Okay, the next theorem tells us that when can we say that the Dinkin system and the sigma algebra of the collection of sets are the same? And the answer is that if the collection is closed under intersections. So again, the proof is by a double set inclusion meaning we need to show that delta of C is a subset of sigma of C and the other way around. 
the first inclusion follows immediately from the fact that sigma algebras are Dinkin systems. Hence, uh, there are more Dinkin systems containing C. Therefore, delta of C is a subset of sigma of C. The next, or the reverse inclusion, uh, will follow once we have shown that delta of C is indeed a sigma algebra. And why is that? So delta of C is a sigma algebra that will contain C. Since this is the smallest sigma algebra containing C, and delta of C is just a particular sigma algebra that contains C, Therefore, sigma of C, the smallest, must be a subset of this particular sigma algebra delta of C. Hence, you combine these two inclusions here, you get this one. Okay. Now, to show that delta of C is a sigma algebra, first, Delta of C is a Dinkin system. According to the previous theorem, which we go back here, take note that in order to show that a Dinkin system is a sigma algebra, we only need to prove that it is close under intersections. And for this, we show that Delta of C is contained in the Dinkin system generated by a set D in Delta of C. And what is this Dinkin system? So a script D of D is the collection of all subsets of X such that D intersection that subset E is in Delta of C. Once we know this, then delta of C is close under intersections. Well, uh, to see this, if we take two elements, okay, say D and E in delta of C, then E must be in delta of C, and since delta of C is a subset of the Dinkin system generated by the set D, we have this. And by the definition, this implies that D intersection E is in delta of C. Therefore, delta of C is closed under uh, finite uh, intersections hence a sigma algebra. So with that, it is enough to prove that this is indeed the case. Hence, we only need to show that delta of C is a subset of the Dinkin system generated by D. Okay. I kept on telling that this is a Dinkin system. But let us verify that one. Okay. So the idea here is that what are the typical elements of D of D? These are the intersection of D in such a way that D intersection E is in delta of C. Okay. So for any D in delta of C, I can write D as D intersection X. Since D is in delta of C, this implies that the second set here must be this set by definition. 
Hence, x is in D, script D of D. For the second condition, take an element uh, E in this collection. Now you can write uh, D intersection E complement as D uh, minus E, a definition. And you can further write uh, D minus E in this way d intersection uh, d minus the intersection of d and e the significance of that is the following okay this one here is in uh, delta of c because this will imply that D intersection of E is in delta of C. Okay. Therefore, since we have shown that D intersection E complement it's in delta of C. This second component must be in this collection. And finally, consider a pairwise disjoint uh, collection of sets. Then, if we take the intersection of D, and the union of this collection and by the distributive property you can write this as the union of the quantity d intersection en we know that uh, this one is in delta c since this is in delta c and since the E sub n's are pairwise disjoint, this is also pairwise. This sequence is also pairwise disjoint. Since delta of C is a Dinkin system, therefore the union of these pairwise disjoint collections of sets in delta of C is again in delta of C. And as a consequence, this union here must be in this collection. Okay, so we have indeed verified that D of D is a Dinkin system. And we shall call it the Dinkin system generated by the set D. Okay, now we go back to our goal a while ago. We need to prove this fact here. So the main idea is to prove that delta of C, or uh, I should say the main idea is to prove that C is contained in this collection. Since we know that uh, this is a Dinkin system that will contain C, and this is the smallest Dinkin system containing C, therefore we have this inclusion. Okay, so this is our goal that we have written before. And we would like to end up with this part here. Okay. So let's start with an element of delta of C and take an element E in C. 
if I have an element f in C, then the intersection of f and E is also in C. Well, E and F are in C, and by assumption, C is close under finite intersections, hence we have this. And uh, take note that C is contained in the Dinkin system generated by C, by definition. Okay, so this implies that F is in the Dinkin system generated by E by the definition of this collection. So you just replace in the previous definition. So you replace this by E, you replace this by F to avoid confusion. And you will have that remark. Okay. Thus, C is contained in the Dinkin system generated by E. And why is that? Well, we started from an element of C. We have shown that it is, an, it is also an element of the Dinkin system generated by e, the set E. Hence, we have this inclusion. This implies that, take note here, we have a Dinkin system containing C. Therefore, the Dinkin system generated by C is a subset of D of E. Because the left hand side is the smallest Dinkin system containing C. And according to this, D of E is a Dinkin system that contains C. And uh, consequently, D is in D of E. Why? By assumption, D is in delta of C. Therefore, D must be also in the larger set D of E. Now, by symmetry of the intersection, uh, take note that D intersection E is equal to E intersection D. This implies that E is contained in the Dinkin system generated by D. And from this, we obtain this inclusion here. This comes from the fact that we started from an element of C. We show that it is an element of D of D. Hence, C is a subset of D of D. And again, by the same reasoning that we already used several times, here we have a Dinkin system containing C. Therefore, the smallest, which is delta of C, must be a subset of this particular Dinkin system. Since D is an arbitrary element of delta of C, we have this claim before. And to recall, take note that this will imply that delta C is closed under intersections. Hence, if you have Uh, a collection that a Dinkin system that is closed under intersections, it is a sigma algebra. And that's uh, the proof of the theorem.
again. If we have a collection that is closed under uh, intersections, the Dinkin system generated by that collection coincides with the sigma algebra generated by the same collection. Okay. Well, the last part of this uh, lecture will be on monotone classes, but we will only uh, consider the definition. We will not deal with these uh, classes uh, in detail in future discussions, but it is nice to know their uh, definition. So a collection of subsets of X will be called a monotone class. So from the word monotone, if you have an increasing sequence of elements of the class, and A is the union of this increasing sequence, then the union must be in M. So in this way, we write uh, AN approaches A from below. So if AN approaches A from below, meaning the sequence is increasing and A is the union, and then the union must be in M. So put in another way, M1 tells us that the class must be closed under uh, an increasing union of elements. And in a similar way, M2 tells us that uh, the class must be closed uh, under uh, the intersection of a decreasing sequence of elements in the class. So the keyword here is monotone. So monotone here means that your sequence is either increasing or decreasing. If you have an increasing sequence, the union must be in the class. If you have a decreasing sequence, then the intersection must be also in the class. It can be shown that uh, Dinkin systems are monotone classes. So in this way, there are more monotone classes than Dinkin systems. Hence, the monotone class generated by C contains, is contained in the uh, Dinkin system generated by C. One could uh, easily uh, show this by following the disjointification process that we have uh, discussed a while ago. And it will be uh, given as an exercise for you. So now we have the last slide for this lecture. So this is the culmination of all the uh, collection of uh, subsets of a given X that we have discussed. So let's start here with a collection C. So we have discussed last time that you can generate a ring, okay, that will contain C. So here an arrow means that one, 
is a subset of the other. So in particular, this arrow means that C is a subset of the ring generated by C. So this collection is an arbitrary collection. On the bottom of this uh, region here, you see some symbols. So zooming that, these are in fact the properties of a ring. So the empty set must be in the ring. It is closed under set difference. It is closed under uh, union and it is closed under uh, intersection. If you take the algebra generated by C, you get a larger set. Here, uh, you will now have the property that the set X is in the algebra. And if you combine this with uh, the set difference, you will also get that the algebra is closed under complementation. So here, you have more properties, so therefore, the collection is larger. In general, of course. On the other hand, you can also generate the sigma ring and this is uh, obtained by adding the properties which are closure with respect to countable unions and countable intersections. If you add these properties in an algebra, you get the sigma algebra and you will get this direction here. So a sigma algebra is an algebra that is close under countable unions and countable intersections. This is larger than the sigma ring since you have this additional property and hence the complementation, which in general may not be true in a sigma ring. So that is one side of these uh, collections, the rings, sigma rings, the algebras and the sigma algebras that can be generated from a collection of sets. On the other side, we have the monotone classes So given a uh, collection C, one can generate the monotone class generated by C. And this is uh, the closure with respect to increasing unions and the closure with respect to decreasing intersections. So in other words, a, a sequence is either increasing, hence the union must be in the monotone class or it must be decreasing so that the intersection must be also in the monotone class. Okay. So take note that a sigma ring are also monotone classes. If you look at this, these symbols here tells us, tells us that a sigma ring is closed under countable unions and accountable intersections, irregardless whether they are increasing or decreasing. So in other words, if this is valid, then these are also valid. Hence, a sigma ring is also a monotone class. And that means that the monotone class generated by C is contained in the sigma ring generated by C. Hence, the arrow provided here. Again, there are more properties uh, that we have, unlike in the case of monotone classes. Hence, the sigma ring generated by C 
is larger than the monotone class that we that it will generate. As we know already, uh, mo uh, Dinkin systems are monotone classes. Therefore, we have this arrow here, which means that M of C is a subset of delta of C. And as you can recall, a Dinkin system has the following properties. It contains X, it contains the empty set, it is closed under a complementation. It is also closed under relative set difference. And it is closed under countable unions of pairwise disjoint elements. Recall that, that here. And again, sigma algebras are Dinkin systems, hence we have this arrow here, meaning delta of C is a subset of sigma of C. Uh, take note that these are the same, uh, provided that C is close under intersections. But in general, uh, the, Dink the delta of C might be smaller than the sigma of C. Hence, the sigma algebra is the largest among all the collections that we have discussed in the previous lectures. And that's it uh, for this lecture. See you and the third one.